What? But I manifested, I manifested you. you. I manifested you. I've been throwing your name Get in the fire for five nights. <laughs> I've been looking at you across Why the dance the floor voice? for like 10 minutes now. <laughs> I think that has to do with um, us growing up though. I hate tattoos. I got a new tattoo. My palms yeah. were sweating. I was, you saw me looking up and I was just trying to like just, so <laughs> just disassociate. I'm not here. But what makes you think you have to put on this image of who Kyle should be to attract someone? For my family, you know, if I'm like this toxic person, no one wants to be around that. Sure. Like, you know. Welcome to another episode of Spirit Talks. I'm the Hermit Tarot, and today we have a very special guest with me. Before I get into it and introduce who is sitting behind me, I want to pay my respects to the traditional landowners of the land that we are gathered at today, the Gumul Boy Yadinji people. Uh, but just all the Yadinji clans in Cairns, I know I'm going to get some heat for that. So all the Yadinji clans in Cairns, especially my father's, the Malambari Yadinjis uh, as well. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce you to today's podcast guest. Next to me yeah. is Kyle. Hello. I don't know if Kyle is comfortable with his last name being known. That's fine. You don't mind? Unless it, yeah. Are people allowed to know your socials if they want to? If they want, yeah. Okay, so find that below. Kyle, introduce yourself. How do we know each other? We're siblings. Um, I don't know. She's like the second mum. Sorry, just fixing your She's mic. Like, yeah, right. She's like the second mum to all of us kids. But yeah, we're good siblings. She's... um. A very, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to talk about you, not me. Oh, <clears throat> I don't yeah, know. Well, yeah, I'm, we I'm Kyle. Yeah, I don't know. There's not much to me, I guess. I'm the middle child, kind of. Yeah. Like me and Sinead are kind of the middle. Yes. But yeah, I'm just regular schmegular guy, Kyle. Well, I was going to ask you this because I knew you would struggle to describe yourself. So yeah. How would you, if you could only... Describe yourself in three words. What three words would you use to a complete stranger who doesn't know complete you? Complete stranger? Um, I don't know. I'm, I can be um, like kind of, not cautious, I'd say. I can be awkward when, you first, when we first meet. Um, so awkward. Um, but once you get to know me, I'm outgoing, I guess. Mm. Um, and I like to be busy kind of yeah really not not really but in, that's that's a new thing being busy and that's interesting yeah i never used to be like that but i like to keep myself busy now that's yeah. crazy because i never i wouldn't have described you as any of those words i well, don't think you're awkward i can be though when especially meeting strangers i think yeah, yeah. I guess in this setting especially we we're just talking about this before we hit all the record buttons at once it's yeah. like awkward in new situations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think so. That's yeah. so bizarre because that weirdly ties this into the first thing that I wanted to talk about, yeah. which is what we were doing earlier today. Kyle, do you want to show them your new addition to your body? Yeah, I'll show this camera. I got a new tattoo. It's a skull in, a, uh, in like a whiskey glass or like a shot glass, if you will. But yeah, I got a kind of a patchwork sleeve going on. So we were all together this morning and we were talking about how sometimes getting a tattoo can be awkward, even though he knew the person that he was talking to. Yeah. I think it was just a new situation, weird vibes. Yeah, yeah, no. Sometimes. Yeah, just in, in weird, I just get real nervous in yeah. weird situations. And I don't know why, because usually I'm not a, like an awkward person. No. I'm not, You're a, not an awkward person. I'm not, person. but it, when you put me in a situation <laughs> that I've, like, I've, I've gotten tattoos before, but I get real weird. And, and you know the and artist. I, yeah, I'll know the artist, me. but I said to you that if I went to another artist, yeah. I won't go to another artist. No. Like, if I reckon if Bella stopped tattooing, I wouldn't get another tattoo. Because yeah. it's just like that. I just wouldn't. It'd just be weird. Yes. I hate going to different people. It's like haircuts, too. I won't yes. go to a new barber shop. There's no way. So if you were going to describe yourself to someone new, you'd tell them, just in case, like, I'm awkward. Just in case well, when you uh, first see them. I don't know. Who, who does that, though? <laughs> <laughs> describe yourself through as I'm awkward. Yeah, I'm awkward. That was the first thing you said, though. That was really shocked. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's kind of weird when you put me on the spot, though. Yeah, yeah. I don't who know. knows? Maybe it's not a deep thing. Maybe it was just like a word of the day. How would you describe me? 
I feel like you're quiet, not yeah. awkward. I see it more as like selective. You're easygoing. Yeah. But you have a lot of layers. So yeah, like that's everybody true. Everybody gets to see every part of you. Yeah. But to most people, like you're pretty easygoing. And yeah. A really, yeah, someone that most people could have a yarn with. Can have a yarn with, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just in those. Select. Selective situations. Yeah. That like I'm a going. random could come up to you and go, yeah, he's a good bloke. But then your best friend would know you better than Yeah, exactly. Yeah, most yeah, people yeah. that see you every day. Yeah, in life. yeah, yeah. You so know? you got layers. But well, yeah, people that I don't really know, but I'm friends with, will, yeah. you know, be like, oh, he's a cool guy. Yes. And then people that I'm really good friends with will be like, yeah, he's all right. Like, <laughs> you know what? Really? I did this for someone else. Who did I do this for? It might have been Ashi. I can't remember. But the viewers and the listeners are going to want to know your star signs. So you know your sun sign. Pisces? Yes. But I wonder I don't know if there was more you don't know it. the rest. No. Yeah. What about Snapchat? Does it tell you? It just says I'm a Pisces. It doesn't say you. It probably name. does, but I just haven't looked into it. Yeah. On my profile, it just says Pisces, and I don't. I don't know the time you were born either. Mum said like two o'clock. You're an Aries moon. Aries I moon. That. And maybe a Scorpio rising. Is that good or bad? It's intense. <laughs> oh really? It's really intense. Mm. Yeah. To be a Scorpio rising. So Theo is a Scorpio sun. Yeah. Your sun represents who you become throughout your lifetime because of your experiences. Your rising sign is who people see. Hmm. So a lot of people probably get the wrong impression of you because your sun and your rising sign are different. Similar to me, my rising sign is like a Gemini, my sun is a Capricorn. Yeah. And someone like Xander Digital, who's behind the cameras today, our brother Alex, he has the same rising sign and sun sign. So he's probably exactly who people expect him to be when they first meet him. Mm. Scorpios are notorious for masking and hiding parts of themselves, mm. very observant. Mm. They usually notice more around them than people notice of them. So with a Scorpio rising, you're probably very good at deflecting back onto people. Yeah. If you don't want the attention on you, <laughs> you probably change the conversation really quickly and make it all about them. But you can also somewhat manipulate people's emotions. Based that's off crazy of how that's around. actually accurate though. And then the Aries moon. Aries moon people are very intense too. Yeah. One of the lads I dated was an Aries moon. So oh. they come on very strong. Yeah. Very like from the beginning when you like someone, like you like them hard. <laughs> but you can also fall out very <laughs> hard too. Yeah. Um, with that being said, Aries, like when they know what they want, they go for it. So they can also be possessive and jealous at times. But they also don't like people to know that they've lost. So if you don't know it's a sure thing, you'll probably keep it to your close circle or just you. Yeah, right. So That's weird. It is weird. That's weird. There's no way. It's There's a lot to it. Okay. And I obviously know you're my brother. So yeah, I'm probably yeah, yeah. using some of that too. But it's interesting. <laughs> <It's so accurate. laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm really excited to have you on this. Not going to lie. Because thanks, man. I've, I wanted to talk about this stuff for a while. Yeah. Like I've got some dot points in front of me and I've been talking to Kyle behind the scenes about this stuff anyway. And it's something that I think this podcast, this community would really benefit from as an open conversation. Yeah. We don't pretend to be experts on this channel. No. We just talk about our own experiences in hopes of relating to other people yeah. who are going through similar shit. Exactly, yeah. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about actually ties in with the tattoo. I wanted to talk to you about the idea that we as human beings can become addicted to making ourselves feel like shit. Oh, yeah. And I was would kind of it just getting a tattoo reminded me of that too because for me personally, I am more likely to get a tattoo when I kind of want to distract myself, mm. which is a lot lately. So I've been adding a lot to my collection. Or I don't know. We have different opinions on this. So I actually love getting tattoos because I love the yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah. I hate tattoos. I can't <laughs> stand the pain. The only thing I look forward to in getting a tattoo is the after. Like, not even, like, straight after. I hate it now, too. Yeah. It's after it's healed and all said and done. That shocked me. During a tattoo and after, I hate. I can't stand. I don't like the pain. You like the pain, which I don't yeah. get. I don't understand, but... I do. Mm. That's why I get them. I think I'm a bit masochistic in that way. Masochistic. Yeah. Because, like, 
I see the pain as part of the process. Right. So for me, with my weird mindset, I have to go through the pain to earn the tattoo. Wow. So I have, if the tattoo isn't painful enough, I leave like, feeling I like I didn't earn this. <laughs> no and that has happened to me before on wow. some of my tattoos. So this one was the most painful one. Yeah, and you were like, yeah. And it, I was like, I earned this. Yes. And I got to the end and I, I was being tattooed by Strats Tats. I will give him a shout out on this. Yeah. Um, Jake and he was at his old store so there were like a few other lads yeah, there yeah, yeah. and they were like oh my god and I sat for the whole thing it was a big day lots of water lots of oh breaks. yeah how long did it take probably took like well he smashed it out in about five hours max oh. but there were times when I was like I'm sweating too much yeah <laughs> and he was like yeah. yeah we need to take a break I need to go to the toilet and rest my eyes oh yeah well yeah. even this one it took like how long do you, it it took like an hour maybe less I think an hour my palms yeah. were sweating I was you saw me looking up and I was just trying to like just just, so just disassociate I'm not here <laughs> But no, it's like it's like that though. Like this yeah. one too, it took I think just over two hours. Wow. And I couldn't stand that. And yes. so I was talking to Bella, like I want a whole sleeve, yeah. but I just can't stand the pain. I just can't yeah, do it. Yeah, I remember you saying I that. I just can't like, do well, it. Well, how you? Yeah, no. Sleeve? So I just think it's patchwork for me. <laughs> just random little tattoos yeah. everywhere. And to be fair, that look is in as well. Like it's well, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So many people. Yeah. And I think it ages really well too. Like I've seen older people with the patchwork. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I amazing. think it looks good. Yeah. But outside of like physical pain, there's also emotional. Emotional shit. pain as well. Yeah. Do you have? Well, can you think of anything? Without well, getting too specific. I think I'm um, yeah like self uh, self destructive in a way, because mm. there's a, there's something to it. No, it's not like um, you know like you know something's bad for you, but you still do it, mm. and you shouldn't. And you know everyone tells you not to, mm. but you still do it. You know, sure. and that's horrible. And that's horrible. So being yeah. self destructive is such a toxic trait. But yeah, it's good being self aware too, though. It's interesting. I talk about it a lot in different capacities because obviously when I channel for other people, it's easy to say, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Yeah. But when you look at yourself, it's good just to know yourself well. Oh, yeah. To understand how you cope too. Yeah. Do you reckon you're more likely to be self-destructive when you're in survival mode, coping mode? Like when I'm backed into a corner, really. Yeah, and say you've got other pressure on you, other stress, are you more likely to use that as like a coping mechanism? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well... Well, now I feel like I'm being, I'm really good now. Sure. Like I'm going to the gym almost every day. I'm yes. exercising. So now I'm really good. I feel like I'm not very, not at my worst. But when I'm at my worst, you know, I'm doing drugs. I'm, mm. you know, hanging out with people that I shouldn't. I still do that, but not mm. as much. And, you know, drinking excessively, you know, there was, there was a point where I was at the pub like every day mm -hmm. and just, just drinking piss all day and waking up and being hungover. And I know I knew I shouldn't have done it. Looking back at it, it's like, that's fucking horrible. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so like, I feel like now I feel like I'm good. But yeah, when I'm backed into a corner, I feel like there's other stresses on my mind. I'll just be like, oh, I'm just gonna go get drunk or, you know, something yeah. like that. But that's so interesting that you use the word good too. And I was gonna ask you, so what's bad? But you answered that yourself. Yeah. So for you being good, Kyle, is going to the gym it's just yeah focusing on my my health and yeah. and now i write into a journal every day i write like about my days whatever it is yeah. you know like today i wrote oh i went to go get a tattoo had the day off oh my god went to i try, yeah i do that but when i'm at my worst i throw away the scrapbook i forget sure. about it i don't go to the gym i'm just drinking and all that sure so what about all of those steps makes you feel better about yourself, I guess? Or is that like an external expectation that you think is on you? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think when I, when I look good, I feel good. Sure. You know? So and that's, well, for me anyway. Like, if I, if I look good, then I feel good. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, you know, um, you know, like, you go to the gym and, like, afterwards, you know, you have a pump. You're like, oh, yeah. Yes. You know, I feel fucking good. Yeah, like, yeah, your bang. endorphins are high. Yeah. And especially when you're eating good, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's another thing, you know, you eat, when you eat bad, mm. you feel horrible all the time. Yeah. You feel horrible all the time. There's obviously like a chemical side to that too. Oh, yeah. What you eat is fuel, basically. Yeah. But just with the journaling too, does yeah. it help you stay accountable? Is yeah, it does. Thing? Yeah, it does, for sure. 
Um, well, I looked back recently at when, when I first started, when I was at my worst, mm. and you, you read it and it's, it's sad. It's, wow. oh, it's so sad. Like, it's so good that you've left those parts in though. So even when you are at your low moments, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. down. And then you switch to back where I'm at now and it's just like, you know, I'm, every day's a good day, really. Oh my God. And like, you have, I have my bad days, you know, like, oh, you know, this happened, you know, I got yeah. punched, whatever, but shit happens. Yeah. But um, most days, almost now, the last this year, I made it my mission to like better myself, mm -hmm. and for not just for myself, but for people around me. You know, I'm wow. more enjoyable to be around. Sure. And I remember like back in the day when I used to like I was I was proper bad. Like you know, I was like sad down in the dumps all the time, listening to sad. Sure. And now I just feel good all the time, and like you know. Yeah. It's just, it's just good for people around me as well, well you know? I was going to ask that. Is it important to you that you're the best version of yourself for others around you? I think so. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, that's like another thing, you know, that, that makes me feel good as well. Oh, wow. You know? It's a part of your values. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we talked about that in my last podcast episode. So for someone like me, it's interesting hearing that. See, that's why I knew you would be good. Because we have like the different sides of the fences. Yeah. For someone like me, other people's expectations of me are burdens. Oh, it's right. so heavy. Real. So you try and like... I try just... not to think about mm. how what I'm doing is going to look good for somebody else. Even if it's a really positive thing. So yeah. like... Even just, I don't know, I probably can share this with the channel, but... Are we allowed to swear on this? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, cool. As long as I was wearing... the first 30 seconds, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. we're still YouTube friendly. Yes. Um, but no, like, with everything that I'm going through now with this house, like... Oh, yeah, that... I have to remove the expectations of even, like, you guys, the yeah. siblings, yeah. and how that looks, because that's just more of like a burden yeah. and a responsibility to do my best and to be successful. Yeah. So for me, I'm more likely to relapse into those negative sort of self-sabotaging because oh, I'm yeah. like, fuck this. Like, this is too much pressure. This is too much responsibility. Yeah. That's another thing, pressure and yeah, yeah, trying to be a people pleaser and you know, well, all that. Sure, there's a fine line, hey, between yeah. like, loving the people around you and trying to please the people around you. Yeah, well, it's just like there's a big fine line because I'm a, it's really for my family, you know, to better myself for, mm. and like my one good friend, Theo. Other than everyone outside of shout that, out I don't. To Theo. <laughs> shout out to Theo. Other than that, I don't really care what people think about me. I'm one of those. Sure. I don't really care what you think about yeah. me. I feel good. I think I look good. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't really care what you think, you know. Yeah. But for my for my family, you know, if I'm like this toxic person, no one wants mm -hmm. to be around that. Sure. Like, you know. Has anything specifically switched that mindset for you of going from when you said you were bad, Kyle, to now trying to be good, Kyle? Um. Um, yeah, I can't, don't know if I should get into it, mm -hmm. but I, I, you guys know, I slept with someone that I shouldn't and I felt really bad for it. Yeah. And then ever since then, I was like, you know what, man, you got to pull yourself together. Mm -hmm. But this was like, this is like not that long ago, but before then I made it my mission. Then that really, I was like, okay, you know, yeah. I was like, fuck, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I was, now I'm trying to be good in that sense Yeah. and really choose what I do yeah. especially when I'm drunk man like especially the other weekend you know how I got into that little scuffle yes that was like okay yeah pull your head in this is ridiculous now yeah um but yeah that's really like that's why I'm real full steam ahead you know I want to start wow. running with Alex I want to yeah. go to the gym every day and all yeah. that but um but yeah and this year yeah it's supposed to be me just yeah getting my shit together really because sure. For, yeah, like the longest time since I've been 18, you know, going out all the time, getting pissed. And, you How know, old are not... you now, just for people who don't know you? So, uh, I'm 23 now. <laughs> you know, so since I was 18, going out, um, doing all this, running around, sleeping with, you know, people that I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's, it's, it gets old and I'm 23, I want to grow up, yeah. you know. And I will just, without getting into too much information, because this is a personal story and we, I've fully prepped Kyle to say he doesn't have to talk about anything he doesn't want to, but people speculate. So when you said you slept with someone you shouldn't have, am I right in saying or safe in saying it's because like a personal boundary was crossed? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A personal boundary was crossed, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But, um, oh shit. 
Can I sit like this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Please be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you like now? <laughs> what do you think this is? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Being old captive here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just sitting straight like this. Time. Yes, Lorraine. <laughs> yes, Lorraine. Sweat. <laughs> Sweating. <laughs> uh. Okay, so it's just really interesting to me because obviously I'm someone who I like. You're in my close circle. Yeah. And whether I mean to spend time with you or not, we live close to each other. We I'm live. always running yeah, into yeah, you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I ran into you down at Down Under, and yes. I didn't know you were out. And <laughs> I was. I was doing an absent shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, Am I seeing this? <laughs> So I've noticed the change and yeah. to be honest with you, I wasn't keeping receipts on where I was seeing you. I no. just noticed that every time I saw you, you were more engaged and more present. Yeah. So for me, when you talk about like bad Kyle, it was more just, you felt like you were physically here, but mentally and emotionally at a distance. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, yeah, exactly. I can't really, it's kind of weird what I was feeling back then I can't really speak because I don't yeah. I can't really remember because yeah. a lot of the times remember back then mm. we were drinking all the time like yeah. I was especially me you know I almost got kicked out of Alex's house yeah you know I was I was a mess and because because of that I wasn't sure I think that was a part of it's drinking to just to my emotions you know all yes. that and now I'm more in touch with my emotions and I think what's helped with that was writing it down how yeah. I was feeling during the day yeah. And all that. Um, Definitely. And that's helped. But yeah, back then it was just horrible. But So you started journaling even back then? Just no, to help I you started journaling mid last year. Wow. Mid last year. Yeah. Because I wanted it to be a thing and I've been very on and off about it. Mm -hmm. But every time I stop and then I'll come back, I'll like say why I've stopped or like what I was feeling in the last wow. like month that I didn't journal. So you're still keeping yourself accountable even when you take breaks. Yeah, yeah, Love of course, it. yeah. We always talk about that here because I don't think it's realistic for any human being to do the same thing at the same time every day yeah, of their lives. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's just not the way lives work. But the no. fact that you, when you do pop back in, yeah, like, this yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I've been doing. Yeah, and it's just the thing to like, yeah, see how I was feeling back then yeah. And um, so I can look back at it now and be like, well, I've been doing better. And then yeah. like when I do go to a bad stage again, I'm like, man, I was doing so well. And that will just motivate me to wow. get back to where I was, you know? Because I was going to ask you that too, but again, you answered it. Love it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I'm someone who I have too many journals, Carl. Right underneath you, there's two journals. Oh and gosh. they all have different things in it. One of them is just song lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> My angsty self, <laughs> writing down song lyrics. <laughs> Same class. <laughs> yeah, what for? Um, and then in the other journal, I have manifestations. Mm. And if I'm looking at a reading, I'll write down key words that resonate and go back to it. Yeah. So I actually reread that journal more. But probably nine out of ten of the journals that I have, I never reread. Oh, really? You should. That's what I mean. I'm noticing that you do. Do you mm. think that's a helpful part I of your I think process? so, yeah. I think, it's a, I think it, it helps me a lot, really. Mm. Um, yeah, just to see how you were feeling back then, especially because it's weird. Yeah. Like, how you're feeling now is so different to how you're feeling, like, yeah, like mid last year. And that's it too. You Sometimes know? life is so, like, it circuits so quickly. It, even last week oh, could yeah. be a different energy. Well, man, so much stuff happens. And I look at it as chapters, man. Because I remember I had a toothache and I was like, oh, man. And then when I got that fixed, something else happened. Like, and then I was just like, oh, this is another chapter. You can literally feel, like, yeah. the next chapter in your life wow. happening. You know, yes. like Sinead, she has a toothache right now. She so got Sinead that ripped is our out. Sister. Yeah. She will be on the podcast soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sinead has a toothache. And I was like, man, this is one of her chapters. Once she gets that pulled out, and next week she's going to Brisbane. You guys are going to Brisbane. Yes. And that's another chapter beginning. Yeah. And then you get back, and then I wonder what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. Do you think it makes life a little bit more interesting? I think too? so, because if it's just one continuous thing, it just makes it too long and it's yeah. just boring. Yes. If you look at it in chapters, you know, you feel like you can feel something happen. Happening, yeah. You know? And noticing the cycles wrapping up. Yeah, like like this is wrapping up. You're gonna get a well hopefully a house soon. Yes. That's the next chapter, and then after that, what's next? You know, yeah, <laughs> Yes. 
No, so true. Yeah. I think looking at it that way too gives you room to actually hopefully reflect and yeah. go, you know what? Yeah, and if you look back and, yeah, you look back in your scrapbooks like, man, I remember yes. that chapter. Wow. I'm on like the I'm on two hundred chapters after that, yeah. but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. That's such a good idea. And the journaling all falls into that. Yeah, for That's sure. So helpful. But coming back to that bloody dot point. If I could share like a personal example and maybe if anything rings a bell for you, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. shared so much though. And in terms of like moments where I've felt addicted to making myself feel like shit, it wasn't like a conscious choice for me mm. of like, I just want to keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. It like... was more of like a, this is easier for now mm. and this feels good enough for now. Yeah. I always told myself like, it's not that bad actually. Like, yeah. This is pretty, This it could be worse. Right. Was like things that I would say to myself. And I guess for me personally, that looked like me just not really sticking to any plans that I'd made. Yeah, right. Trying to make myself look busier than I actually was. Mm. Um, I'm personally someone who probably is addicted to responsibility, but I have yeah. an interesting way of <laughs> making are. it look like it's more than what it is too. Mm, like yeah. I put myself in situations where boundaries get crossed, yeah. values get sort of broken because I'm just trying to make myself useful. I think that has to do with um, us growing up though. Yeah. You know, because you were, because you were mum's helper, really. Yeah. And you helped raise all of us kids, really, like, you know. Yeah. So um, I think that has to, has oh, a lot to do sure, with it. man. So for me, make, uh, making myself feel like shit is, is literally burning myself burning at both yourself ends. Out. Yeah, really. And making myself so burnt out to the point where the only thing I can do to cope is get blackout drunk. Yeah. That's yep. my only outlet is like, well, I've, I've done all this, done so all. may as well go get blind yeah, for the yeah, whole weekend. Yeah. But and, um, yeah. That's all part of it though, I guess. For that's sure. um, yeah. And knowing that about yourself. So if we could, because I know that this is something a lot of people would resonate with. Getting myself out of that cycle was about realizing that it's not sustainable. Yeah. As much as I was functioning and still maintaining a lot of my relationships, yeah. they were strained. Oh, yeah. I wasn't having a successful relationship with mum because I was putting myself in the position of feeling burnt out feeling by Feeling burnt out and you still like... Hey, but I've committed myself to everything with her. So I technically took a step back and was like, I'm kind of to blame here because yeah. I'm enabling this cycle as well. And I'm putting myself in that position. So I guess for me, breaking out of that was being able to take a step back and look at how it was so easy to get stuck in that cycle. Yeah. And convincing myself to believe that that's as, that was good enough for now as well. Yeah. When actually it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. I was the same, to be honest. And like even now, like I'm, because I'm not like, say I'm like this new guy and I'm so good, like, you know. But like even now I do stuff and I'm just like, man, I still shouldn't do that. Like sure. I still go to town every weekend and spend like how much money, like, you know, even sure. now I'm like, man, I could have saved that for like something, you know, more important, you know? Sure. And like, I just think it's um, breaking out of like bad habits like that is, is really hard actually. Mm -hmm. Especially people for me. Mm -hmm. I, I like to um, cling on to bad people. And just like, it's just horrible because it's not, um, yeah, it's not, sustainable for like good like yeah. being happy you know clinging yeah. on to bad people that you know are bad but you're just like i'll put up with it sure. you know i'll i'll do this you know yeah. for now this is all right and bad in like their behaviors or like a crossing of values like behaviors and it's kind of both yeah sure behaviors like um you know you shouldn't be hanging out with these people they you know they're doing drugs mm -hmm. and if you're with them you're going to do drugs too Sure. And you regret it every time. And, you know, next weekend you, you tell yourself, oh, I'm not going to hang out with these people. Yeah. Still do it, you know, still yeah. do it. And it took me a while to drop those people because I kept getting in trouble. Yeah. You know, and um, or like it's just bad for your health too. Yeah. You know, so like bad people and emotionally bad people for you. Sure. People that take advantage that. of you, use, use you. But, you know, and it's just all a part of it really. I think emotionally bad people for me either l enable me to sit in those cycles of feeling shit about myself, oh, either yeah. because of the b things we're getting up to or because they also 
don't see any better for themselves. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. We're all just staring at each other with no hope for the with future. With no, yeah, like what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I'll do whatever you do, and then and it's just like, yeah, exactly. Short-term ways. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think like another big part. So for me, I don't know. Coming out of that, a lot of like my worst coincided with the growth of this channel, and it was a huge tower moment for me which we call in tarot like a sudden unexpected change all right having to confront that heavy responsibility of all of a sudden a hundred thousand people are watching me live my life yeah see that would freak me out yeah did that was that like whoa well yeah that's yeah. A, that coincided with a lot of my like rock bottom those moments yeah now, we yeah, getting yeah, drunk yeah right. every weekend with each other so yeah it was just it's it's one of those things where like I went the complete opposite and I was like, maybe I should just abstain from everything <laughs> and be completely sober <laughs> yeah. and not do anything and, you know, just try to be the spiritual guru. That's so hard. That's... And then I was only a week into it. <laughs> <laughs> a week. And I was like, uh, hmm. you were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why am I having to be Buddha now? That, like, yeah. All of a sudden I'm Buddha. Um, but like, so, did, so what did you do? Did you like... Um, so I had to find a balance. And honestly, the last two years of my life have been about balance. Right. And sometimes key events happen and that balance gets tipped either way. Yeah. Where I'm like, nah, and that's where I'm at at the moment. I don't really want much to do with town. It's not because well, I'm yeah. on my high horse or anything, but I just feel so burnt out being there. Yeah, for sure. Because I remember, yeah, because last weekend we went to Alex's thing yeah. and you weren't drinking. No. So like, um, and but yeah, like a few, like it was about a month or two ago. Yeah. We were going to town and stuff. Yes. You just and go through those phases. Drunk. Like you're just like, so, you know what? Yeah, literally. Yeah. And that's what I've noticed about myself. Like, and I don't think this will ever balance out, to be honest. Like, I don't think I'll become an old lady and retire. Like, yeah, it's just like. I think with my personality and with the, the way that I'm living life and the experiences that I want, there's times where I just have to listen to my body and go, yeah, no, nah, a drink would be nice. Yeah. And then other times, like at the moment, I know that alcohol will just slow me down. Yeah, for sure. Because of the effects on my body. Well, man, we're getting old. The hangovers aren't worth it anymore, no, man. No way. <laughs> I remember when I used to, used to drink like until like three o'clock and then go mm -hmm. to work next morning at six. And I'd feel fine. Like I just, yes. yeah, I just feel tired, and then I'd be fine. I'd have Red Bull, and I'm fine. Now I'm, I'm out for like two days. Yes. I can't do it. No, I same. can't do it. I was sharing this with someone. It was either Alex or Abby. Um, I literally am at the point where the funnest part of drinking mm. is the first sip. Yeah, that's it though, because <laughs> it's, it's, sip, it's all that could be first. is what's exciting, you know? Wow, what this night could turn Literally. into, and it's just you being sick. <laughs> and then as soon as I start to get drunk and numb, yeah, I, I sober up because I'm like, I can't <laughs> yeah, feel can't anything anymore. Any <laughs> it's not going to get any better from <laughs> no, here. <it's> not. <laughs> it feels like uh, bedtime. <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> Let me sober up and see if that helps. Oh my God. So I'm literally at that point now where it's like, I just, alcohol doesn't add to my experiences and yeah. at this stage. We'll see. But I just, yeah. well, I don't know. With you and your stages, <laughs> well, it's weird for me because I don't know that I'm drunk until I'm blackout. Like, I just black out, and then I'll be like, whoa. And then everyone's like, oh, you were so drunk. And I was like, oh, wow. shit. But, like, I get to a point where I'm like, oh, I'm going to black out here. But yeah. I never go, oh, I'll just drink water. No, nah, yes. I just go full steam ahead. That's, that's what Literally. I do. And I hate that I do it. But it's just, like, the vibe, too. Because you know how me and Theo go. Like, you know, it's just. Yeah, the people around you. The people around you. Yeah, really. yeah, that's it. But for you, because this is something that I've had to think about, I don't think I am, but because of the history of our family and alcoholism, mm. I'm constantly having to kind of check myself and be like, are you self-medicating? Yeah. Is this for fun? Or yeah, are you trying to yeah, disassociate for sure. and numb yeah, yourself? Yeah, for sure. And this is me holding my yeah. collar and being like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I ever wear collared shirts? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but do you ever do that? And if you do, how yeah. frequently? No, I um I do that for sure. Um, but it's more when like um when like yeah like when I go overboard like oh. on a on a work night or like you know when I just when I know I'm having a bad day and I'm just like oh I need a drink and I go yeah. get go get drunk. Yeah. You know, I do that. Now, I think it's just more for fun. And I know when it's for fun when I don't want to go out. 
yeah. when I don't want to, but when I'm like, oh, let's go out, let's go, let's go out, that's when I'm like, okay, yeah, watch Wait out, a yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Because now I'm, I'm all right. I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like going out, yeah. but I will go out because there's nothing else to do. Sure. So it's like boredom that. Puts yeah, it's you in boredom that. that yeah, too. yeah, that's it. Yeah. But um, yeah, when I'm, yeah, when I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I am like using this as like, yeah, self medication. Sure. Is when like I'm like oh yeah I can't wait to go out and it's only like Tuesday or yeah, like, you know okay. like that's you're literally living for the yeah weekend. that's it yeah that's yeah. it you know yeah pushing for that relief yeah basically. yeah 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 definitely and that goes back to the lowest moments in my life too yeah when you're like excited for the weekend on a Monday yeah on a Monday it just happened <laughs> yeah it just happened. we you just, just came started from the weekend, weekend. <laughs> Chill out, bro. but you did also talk about feeling stuck in cycles for a long time yeah yeah and I know like that's where we may feel like we differ too because for me I think I when I get too bored I create chaos yeah. I think I do. Yeah. It's probably not the same kind of chaos that destructive people do. Yeah. But like, I just start slapping things to do on my list. And oh. I'm like, look, I got a dog. I got a cat now. Yeah, right. I got a new car now. I got a new house now. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. Just, I seem to like to create change for myself. I don't know where I stand with that though. Yeah. Like, I don't even know. Like, I, I find that problems just, just like follow me around. I feel sure. like. Like, you know, I kind of create problems for myself without even knowing it. Okay. Or I kind of like, you know, like I'll do something and I'll be like, man, this is going to bite me in the ass later. Wow, yeah. And then I do it and then it does bite me in the ass later. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? That's like, what just, what like went wrong? Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay, because I was, I was going to ask you, what does that even <laughs> what mean? Does that even yeah, mean? yeah. Well, I just quickly wanted to ask before we move on to that point. How do you think that creating problems for yourself and feeling stuck interlocked? Like, do you think you get into cycles where the problems are the same, so you feel stuck, or you're feeling stuck because of the problems? Um, I, I feel like I feel stuck because, oh, not because of the problems. I'd say just more of, more of like just yeah, like self-loathing. Like I feel sorry for myself and like sure. all that, and, and problems that I create, and then it just makes me feel stuck. And I'm like, oh, I'll just go go get a drink or I'll yeah. do drugs um, and then nothing's nothing in life is changing for me my life sucks you know it's just like stuff like that so like it kind of yeah all interlocks into one to, to, to one just self-sabotage really yeah just you know you just yeah well how do you measure your growth and success like your progress um like probably to I don't know how I feel because I know when I feel I'm, I'm like I know when I feel like shit and I know when I feel bad about myself because I'm not that confident but now I'd say I'm at my most confident wow. I feel like I'm yeah I feel good like you know when I feel good yeah. and like like I said you look back into your scrapbook or like your notebook and see yeah. how you're going and I'm like wow like I am That's doing right. so bloody wholesome though yeah because a lot of people would answer that question and go my job you nah, know, my lifestyle, not my job. Uh, the nah. things I'm buying. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, I just feel like, you know. And you for would, you, it's, yeah. yeah. I, I'd argue that that's the more important shit. I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's, it's just how you're going in life, really. It's like how you, how you feel. Who cares about your job, man? Who cares about that? Like, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. You know? Everyone can hate their job, but like, do you hate your life too? Like, or do you love your life? <laughs> yeah, like, you literally. know, life outside work, you know, well, it exists. And do you think like you ever get misunderstood because of that? Like, have you ever had people make you feel like you haven't made progress when you know you have because they can't see that you're measuring your progress? Oh, yeah. You, you know, those, there's those people that are material, like really, I'm, I'm probably the least material person ever. Cause I don't, cause I don't see, I don't know. Like, yeah, you get those people that you went to school with. They, they're engaged, have two kids, have a house mm -hmm. and they're like, oh man, yeah. You know, what have you been doing? Like, yeah, nothing. Just chilling, man. You know? And they're like, oh yeah, why well, not doing much? And like, I'm like, man, I'm probably way happier than you. Like <laughs> you have two kids, a mortgage and a missus you have to worry about, man. Like I'm not saying that's bad, but like, you know, it's just like we, yeah, we measure happiness differently, I guess. Yeah. Or success, success should I say, you know? Yeah. But I think that's very telling of someone who's clearly been through a lot. I think because, so. Because, I mean, I know a lot about your story, but like for me personally, it took me a while to get to that point because I wasn't in tune with who I am. Oh, right. I would always measure my success based on 
other people's expectations of me. Huh. So from a young age, I was conditioned to be celebrated because of what I got in school. Yeah, Because right. of how many trips I was going to. People only yeah. wanted to talk to me when they saw what I was achieving physically. Yeah, see, that sucks, man. Whereas I wasn't happy. No. I was stressed from yeah, a young stress, age. Conditioned man. to take on way too much responsibility. Yeah. And it took me till later in life, literally almost your age, actually, Carl, when yeah. I first left New Zealand. Did you leave New Zealand when you were my age? Yeah. To realize, like, I've been doing this whole life thing very wrong. Yeah. Because I had the right. partner who was ready to marry me. I had, like, this life that I created. Your whole, whole life, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't life. happy. I could not function and another day like that i literally made my skin crawl waking up in that reality every yeah day. what made you go like fuck this man well i was talking to alex about this actually a big part of that was towards the end the worst moments of that reality i was waking up having a panic attack to my alarm Shit. like literally experiencing heart attack symptoms from 6 30 in the morning oh my and then God. having to calm myself down enough to be able to be at work by nine so i just i mean like you can't live like that and like it's, <laughs> that's not feasible and sustainable and like being away from family too not having that support network too that's a big thing about it yeah. like you know when you're going through shit, yeah. a support network is very important that's what i've noticed oh for sure and i couldn't figure out why i felt stuck mm. when on paper i looked like i was thriving i was yeah, in a different yeah, country yeah. i had like a decent lifestyle yeah because you know? i didn't know any of that, that until you got back to australia yeah. because i knew like oh you're, just, oh, you're in new zealand which yeah. i could be in new zealand yeah <laughs> i just finished I, I think then i just finished school we're five years apart yeah yes yeah so, yeah, so just me you. like same thing as me and john yeah. yeah so yeah i just finished school and i was like man wish i go to new zealand she must be having the time of her life but really <laughs> having fucking panic attacks at Literally. six o'clock in the morning yeah so that was part of it measuring my success wrong yeah and looking at how i could be successful in the wrong way yeah. So I felt really stuck at that point in my life. I felt like I was in a twilight zone, groundhog yeah, day. I couldn't right. break out of it. Even though we were doing so much, my feelings didn't change. Yeah, so, and that's when you knew it was time to gap yeah, it. Yeah, but I didn't know how to break myself out of that. I just tried to start life over again in the same way that I had been doing it. Yeah. Which is where like I managed to lose weight, but yeah. I was making myself blackout drunk every weekend yeah, on see, top of that. So, so it was like, where's the balance? Yeah. And that's where I've been for the last probably three years is just maintaining a healthy balance yeah, I think, without being yeah, too strict. That's good, yeah. But yeah. We will talk about foreshadowing while we've got time, though. Yeah, so what is that? Foreshadowing is the idea that, well, actually, I don't know if this has ever been used in the context of, like, in the context of your own life, but usually in a storyline when someone foreshadows it's like a little character or a narrator or a writer will drop mm. a little hint of what's to come so someone might say something in a movie and be like wow this day is so beautiful how could it get any oh, better like that and then they're like oh, there's that foreshadowing for something yeah, else right and then it's like oh my god dad my first yeah car. yeah and then, and, then, and then like after that it goes horribly yeah. wrong like yeah, yeah well it that. could be a bad foreshadowing could be bad too. foreshadowing it could be good it could be bad the idea of foreshadowing though is often a bad thing so it could yeah. be like damn this can't get any worse yeah yeah and it does yeah <laughs> kind of like jinx narrator. like you jinxed it really yeah literally ah. so i had this theory that you can foreshadow in your own life because i did it to myself how let me know so i had this happened just recently too i filmed a podcast on this couch the one that comes out before this episode eight go watch it if you haven't already and i was talking in first person about moving into my house mm. and at that point i hadn't looked at the house i hadn't put an offer on it shit and at the time that the podcast is coming out, I'll be under contract with a settlement date. Wow. So I believe that I was foreshadowing that moment of, I was so, I was talking as if it was already there. Is it like, kind of like, um, what do you call it? Uh, where you think of something so hard and then it happens. Manifesting. Manifesting. Is that kind of like I think it's like, like a subconscious way of manifesting. Way. But that's oh, the thing. Right. What if you could make it conscious? Make it conscious and be like, yeah. Yeah. 
Wow, that's crazy. Because I know that it probably happens in a negative way where yeah. we get in those cycles and we're like, oh man, like you watch now, I'm going to lose this too. You know, yeah, and we foreshadow yeah, that yeah, in our own yeah. lives. Yeah. So then when it does happen, we're like, see, I told you. Yeah, well, it's kind of <laughs> like, yeah, the chapter is what I was talking about. Like, yeah, you know, I wonder okay. what the next chapter is going to be, good or bad. And yeah. then you just think of something. and then. But I kind of feel like if you subconsciously do it, you kind of make it happen though. Like you yeah. kind of, you know, you're like, ah. Oh. Well, there's that theory too that like a watched kettle never boils. So if you're just staring at your life, expecting it to happen. No yeah. Yeah, yeah, is it exactly. gonna happen? Yeah, is do it you gonna just happen? sort of throw it out there and live? Basically? Yeah, I think I think that's the best way to do it though. Yeah. Be interesting. It's definitely something worth paying attention to. Yeah, right? foreshadowing. Because I've never um never really tried manifesting anything. Yeah, wow. I don't even know how you do it. Do you just think of something really hard? Oh, I have a whole podcast episode on this. Oh, no. Okay. No, there's a few steps to it. The harder you try, the harder it is and the less likely you are to succeed. So the first step is just setting clear intentions. Uh. Being very clear about what you want, not necessarily specific. Yeah. Because if I say I want a, you know, I don't even know what would I think of off the top like, of my head? I want a Mercedes AMG. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mercedes AMG. It's going to happen. 250. Oh, no. G Wagon. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you're just With like the sitting there, like, oh, it has happened, it has happened. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, say you get that specific. Yeah. Um, you have to kind of stay a little bit open and receptive to the yeah. fact that you may have set the bar at a level where there's something better. Yeah. And if you're so specific, you could actually be cutting yourself short. So yeah, one of the things that I manifested was a car yeah. and I was manifesting it by stalking Hyundai every day. I would make that car <laughs> every day on my job. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was not working. <laughs> I was manifesting. <laughs> but anyway, so I would build this car on my late night shifts after I'd done everything. Last yeah, 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 yeah. And I would build it from the inside out. I knew exactly what exactly. I wanted the wheels to look like. I didn't even know you could do that. That's yeah. crazy. And I would look at the car, not in like a, you're going to be mine, but just, just like, as just a, like, uh, I'd imagine myself it. in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah like I'd that. imagine myself driving it, picking it up. Wow. And then I'd close it and I'd get back to work. Mm. And I'd just keep hustling at work. And so I had the intention of wanting that car. Yeah. But I didn't set a specific time frame or place or, or how. Yeah, you're just like, I'm going to get it eventually. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then one day I decided to go and test drive it. And I'd been so focused on manifesting it that I was yeah. literally picking up all these shifts and yeah, <laughs> got yeah, a yeah. different a new position. Like, yeah. Because that was part of like building the car. I did it at work. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. I didn't have a computer at home. So. It was like a conscious and subconscious thing, um, like a byproduct of being at work. Mm. So when it came time to getting the car, I had enough money. I had like a stable job. Wow, there you go. <laughs> and I knew exactly what I wanted. And I basically built it in front of him in two minutes. And he was like, we've never sold that car to anyone before. Wow, that's so cool. So there were so many things along the way that were out of my control, like a few setbacks. The original yeah. company I wanted to finance with didn't approve the loan because of some clause in my contract. And I was like, oh, uh, well, that's out of yeah, my control. Well. I'll let go of it. And then they came back to me and they said, would you consider going through a different finance company? I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I stepped up, had that accountability. So you go from kind of surrendering what you can't control to being accountable of what you can yeah, control. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's a key part of manifestation. A lot of people think it's just putting it out in the universe and, yeah, and hoping for it to yeah that. see that's the thing like it has no. to be on your end as well like yes. you have to really want it i guess and you have to be accountable of what you can control. yeah yeah exactly if you've been called to do something and you don't do it don't expect it to just happen for you yeah. type of thing so can you manifest people see this is where i'm torn because i believe that every person on this earth has free will mm. and i think that regardless of you know soulmates and soul contracts yeah, and people thinking I mean, yeah. that they have the one love of their lives yeah everyone has free will so the person you're manifesting can easily turn around and go i'm sorry no yeah and then you're like what but i manifested, I manifested you. you i manifested you <laughs> i've been throwing your name Get in the fire for five nights <laughs> i'm looking at you across Why the dance the floor voice? for like 10 minutes now <laughs> i've been manifesting you for 10 minutes <laughs> Here's your drink. Here's your drink. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but that's it. Like you can't control. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, feel. you can't. Yeah. So I think like within the realm of possibility, you could try 
But I just personally don't think it's fair for yourself and for some other person yeah. to go, you're my soulmate and I've manifested Yeah, and I've manifested you. Like, oh my you God, and this, that's that, really that. intense, man. It'd be cool if you two manifested each other. Yeah, see, that's cool. Yeah. And I think when it works is when you manifest the idea of somebody. Yeah, yeah. So you can manifest the idea of somebody and then leave it open to whoever fits this mold. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they're going to be the one. Yeah, yeah. But I think if you go by name... <laughs> no, that's crazy. That's I feel much. like yeah, when you're burning candles and all that... <laughs> Actually, do you think anyone's manifesting you by name? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. It, I'd be honoured if someone did, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd feel cool Cute. about that. Well, you've just given a platform of 171,000 people. <laughs> A chance to manifest you by name, Kyle Sinch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> told him my last name, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's interesting. I do think foreshadowing is a part of manifesting, whether yeah. you do it consciously or not. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to just pay attention. I've started paying attention now to what I say. I feel like I'm going to start paying attention now because I didn't know what foreshadowing was. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I was shocked watching it back and going, oh, that's exactly what's happening right now. Yeah, and why right. Why was I talking about it like it was reality three weeks ago? Mm, yeah. And I hadn't even started yeah, the process. Right. Like, so yeah. that's crazy. But yeah. I, this is another thing. Yeah. Just like... Um, Kirk's hair. Yeah. What's, what's going to happen next? What's happening next? Yeah. You literally. Know? Big Yes. So I think like one of the last things that I wanted to talk to you about before I free you into the world, and we're yeah. actually probably going to go to the gym after this. You're going to go to the gym. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you reckon I'll be right with my tattoo? You'll be fine. Yeah. Just, I went to work. Yeah. Working with chemicals. Just be careful rubbing it on the equipment. Oh yeah. Wash it as That's soon as so you get gross. home with yeah. soap and warm water. Mm. I'll be fine. It's probably no dirtier than anywhere else in this yeah, world. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Too. At this stage. But the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was these heavy, heavy words that I know a lot of people in this community, well, any human being would feel this actually. Let's not just keep it specific to spiritual communities. Regret and guilt. Heavy, yeah. heavy shit. Yep. In situations where you feel regret and guilt, either because of something you've done or because of something you haven't done. Yeah. How do you find yourself coping? Like, what advice would you give to someone who's regret really going guilt. through it right now? Oh, man. Like, regret and guilt? Yeah. See, I'm weird with that, though. I'm real weird with that. It feels like any of you guys, and I did something to make you guys feel really horrible. Mm -hmm. I just, I'd feel horrible about it. And I'd just say sorry, obviously, and do anything that I can to fix what I've done. Mm -hmm. But, man, I'm horrible for, like, outside of my circle, though. Sure. Like, I'll do something. Like, say I, I do something and I won't feel bad about it mm -hmm. because, I don't know, it's not my job to make you happy. I was going to say that. Do you think that's a way of you reminding yourself that you, or you're only responsible for yourself and other I people think should so. be responsible for themselves? Yeah, yeah. This but it's, it's horrible too. Like, that's a bad trait that I have and I am fully aware of that. Like, you know, I'll... Um, yeah, you just do things to people or, you know, and then um, they'll, you know, they'll be like, oh, you're such a horrible person. And I'll just be like, it's not my job to make you happy. Mm. Like, you know, I'll, I've always been the way I am, but you chose to hang around, you know, mm -hmm. and now you're hurt. I'm fine, mm -hmm. you know. But when it comes to your circle or my circle, yeah, I just, I, I don't, because I don't feel that a lot, guilt and all that I, I don't know how to act really with that wow how would you well i was just going to ask you too quickly before i yeah. talk about myself yeah yeah and i will forget this if i don't say it do you think trying to change your relationship with regret and guilt towards people who aren't in your close circle yeah. is part of you being better kyle or oh. is it more for your close circle i don't know like fit doing like for my close circle Oh, no, for people outside my circle, I feel like I've always been like that, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been called narcissist by, by people. Wow. Nar yeah, narcissist. Because I don't, I don't care how you feel. I care how I mm -hmm. and my circle feels, like my family. Yeah. I don't care about you. That's interesting because that's such a big claim. But I feel like that, that's... Well, yeah, yeah. I'm, like, like, I'm, you, I'm not a narcissist. It's just like... I feel like that's part of your Scorpios, too, rising, that we were talking about at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Having layers... Yeah, yeah. And some people only see the protective layer. Yeah. Because I would never in a million years describe you as narcissistic. No, but yeah. But I've also no. heard some of the shit that you've done and I'm yeah, calling yeah, yeah. that's so, cracked. Yeah, I, yeah, see, so, so uh, yeah, layers really. 
big layers. I have big layers. Big layers. layers. They're not that big. (laughs) Not that big. (laughs) Yeah, well, you're fucked. Huge layers. (laughs) 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 But I just mean, like, to claim that you're narcissistic. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and, like, yeah, you'll ask anyone. You'll ask anyone in the circle, you know, like, Theo's like, oh, you're not a narcissist. No, people that know you. But, like, you know, when, yeah, I have told you guys like things that I've done and I've paid the price for some of it you know yes um yeah Yeah. it's just like I guess like how you could see me in that way but you don't know me like that like you know like well I wonder this then is part of your coping mechanism dissociating yourself into different fractions of identity I think so yeah so there's like town Kyle yeah and maybe there's even tinder Kyle yeah and then there's like and then, oh, Kylie. Well, when I'm we <laughs> well, when I'm with when I'm with a girl, I'm totally different to how I am with anyone yeah, else. You know, okay. I'll change my personality. That's a Scorpio rising trait. You know, yeah, and I'll change my personality. And then when I'm when I bring her around my friends or family, they'll later be like, "Wow, you act so different yeah. around." I'm like, well, "That's how I really am. I'm different with you." Yeah. You know? Okay. That's so like, really, every girl that I've hung out with doesn't really know me. No. You know, I'll change my personality. Has anyone gotten close? No, you know not really. Oh, one. Okay. And one. And, but she hates me now because okay. she found out what I really am like. Yeah, wow. Is that uh, because you painted such a grand image of yourself? Yeah, I do. I, I'll paint a picture of myself, too, especially early stages, paint a picture of myself to kind of sell myself to them. Okay. And then after that, I just don't really care after like, you know, I'll wow. just be like, whatever. That's so interesting. And then, yeah, they'll be like, again, bringing it back. They'll be like, oh, you know, you, you, you fucked me around. I'm like, I don't care. That's like, so bizarre. What made you think, like, this is crazy. I feel like this turning into therapy. <sighs> but like, cause I know you, yeah. I feel like most people who are single would yeah. be looking for the real Kyle Singe. But what makes you think you have to put on this image of who Kyle should be to attract someone? Well, well, that's my whole thing. Like, I'm not really looking for a girlfriend, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm, just, I'm just selling myself in short terms, you know. Yeah. Then after that, whatever. And then on to the next, I'll sell myself again. Yeah, wow. And that's why I have this long list of people that fucking hate me and okay. hate my guts. But then, like, yeah, they'll be... And then, like, they'll... um go around to like my family or friends of mine they'll be like oh he's a fucking asshole and be like he can't be that bad he's not he's not he's an all right guy i wonder where the disconnect is though do I they expect more from you or are you up front from the beginning um i don't really know way eh? um well i i don't really i don't want them to expect much from me that's mm. the whole thing like i don't really i I am how I am with them and I'm how I am with other people yeah you know and if they have a problem with that I don't I don't care like you know it's probably that plus the mix of how dating is just so yeah dating especially that's what I I was telling Sinead like I'm like because we we're telling Lil our cousin we we're having this conversation actually before they're like man you've changed so much over the last few years and like I don't think I have like I've I'm a product of my environment mm-hmm. especially dating in this city mm-hmm. especially you know yeah everyone cool. knows everyone mm. so like you have to be like you have to have thick skin and you have to like you know mm-hmm. become this person just to you know and that's why I, I i don't think i'll date again in the city unless they're not from Cairns because yeah. you know i'll i'll show someone a photo of a girl that I'm talking to and then be, my friend will be like, oh, yeah, I know her. Like, I slept yeah, with her or whatever, like, true. my friends. And so not that, that that's a big deal. It's just that, like, um, I don't know. That's why it's just not really, like, my in my favour to date, really. I just don't yeah. have any. I'm having fun now, really. Okay. But, yeah, I have painted this picture to a lot of people that I'm a bad person, which I'm not. But I've kind of done it to myself, you know, yeah. I've, uh, I have this reputation almost. It's interesting because there, I, I, I wonder if that's part of the coping, you know, just to be able to go, well, that's not actually me. Yeah. Like, sure. Say what you want. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Exactly. Like, I don't yeah. feel guilty because you're yeah, persecuting you, someone who isn't Kyle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That might be part of it. Whereas for me, I take that shit so personally. Oh, really? It's taken me a long time to be able to stand objectively and go, 
okay, I am accountable. And then wait a minute, that's you. Yeah. Like, pick up your slack and deal with your yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not taking the blame for this. Yeah, right. So I used to always be the kind of wow where I was like, yeah, like it's me, I'm the problem. Like I could never step back and go like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. I would always assume it was me. If someone came to me and was like, you made me feel like this, I'd yeah. be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why wow. I did that. And how I, I did, so, yeah. So yeah. you're not like, oh, I don't give a fuck, yeah. Like, well, put the blame all on me I if probably. you want. Like, you know. Now I'm just, like, observant, and I just, like, hold that, and I go back, and I think about it, and then I come back. Yeah, and right. decide, okay, I can see what you mean, and I don't yeah, understand yeah, what you're right. feeling, but do you think you're projecting? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, wow. That's yeah, crazy. I was very much the opposite. Whereas I have friends, too did create like these almost alter egos yeah a lot yeah of gemini's like to do that yeah um just as like a coping mechanism of like especially when you're dating meeting new people not and i think that's what personally. yeah that's what it is just being scared of showing people who you really are and being vulnerable like that yeah i don't like it when i yeah when because a lot of the times you get hurt really especially yeah. when dating um yeah but yeah so you kind of make an alter ego and you don't mean to do it i don't mean to do it but you do yeah. And it's just the fear of being hurt by someone that, like, you know, you kind of liked. And wow. Like, yeah. Big things, man. It'll help be helpful for someone, for sure. For someone. And, um, you know, I'm, I can't be the only person that does this. You no, know, where, <laughs> not at all. So where to from here? What are your, like, short-term goals for your success and being happy? Um, well, I want to be the best physical shape I've been in. And I'm on track now, really. Mm -hmm. If I keep this up for um, the rest of the year, I'll be, I'll be good. But mentally, I want to, I don't know, I just want to be, yeah, the best version of myself and cut out basically everything that I just spoke about. Mm -hmm. Very toxic. I want to cut all that out. Wow. And um, just kind of, yeah, just be more, just be the real me. But even mm -hmm. then, like, I've, I've changed myself so much, I don't really know what the real me is. So find yeah. that first. And I was wondering if part of that process is cutting a lot of people out. I think so. It might be, yeah. it might be easier than having to introduce the new Kyle to people who maybe yeah, don't yeah, deserve that exactly. version of you. Yeah. So I think that's just it for me, really. Just trying to be Love the it. better version of myself. Yeah. Even though I am happy with where I'm at now, I can always do better, I think. Yeah. I yeah. think that's the human response. Yeah. Love it. Ah, I think we'll wrap it up there, my guy. Yeah, sweet. Thank right. you so much no for being here. If you want to see more of Kyle, he's given permission to have his accounts linked down below. Probably just Instagram for now. Instagram. And Tinder. No, like <laughs> Tinder around the world. <laughs> no, oh, no, global. <laughs> oh, no. No, probably just do Instagram. But thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in and listening. I hope this episode was helpful for you. If you have any feedback, feel free to comment on my website. There's a link in the description box below. It's not easy to talk about these things. So if there is no one in your life that you can talk to about some heavy shit, feel free to fill in that feedback form and share it with me. Please look after your beautiful self and I will see you in another episode. Bye.